Hey there, Gary Fong here, and uh, got asked about histograms. How important are they? How important is it to know how to read one? Am I supposed to know how to read one in order to be a good photographer? So in order to explain all of that, let's first uh, go to the computer. I'm going to go on Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how to read a histogram on some of the example images. So this is... Uh, on the right is a photo, on the left is the histogram from that photo. Now on the right here you'll see that I've got this big gray area. There's basically only two colors. There's a gray box inside a white box. And uh, you'd say, well, what's the histogram on that? The way the histogram works is from the left here to the right, it shows you what percentage of the um, area has the darkness down here or the brightness to the very brightest and right down here is the middle which is gray. So um, on this very very simple example here's what we have. We have as a percentage about more a little bit more than half of this image here is in gray and then a little less than half of it is in white on two different opposite sides. Right here you can barely see the line but right there on the white you see that the this line goes up only about halfway and then this one here goes up all the way because this is the greatest uh, point. This means that the, most of them are right here in the middle gray, which is level 141. So you see th this number right down here by the level where it goes to 255, which is super bright, and 0, which is black. So in short, you have most of the uh, image is in gray, as represented right here. And then over here, you have most of the, um, I mean, the, this is the white, and just about half of the images are in white. So that's the simplest version of a histogram. Now let's go to one that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, this is the inside of a flower. Now on this one, we don't have anything truly white. We've got these little stamens here, whatever they're called, that are lighter than all the others. Now this is uh, the luminosity. If we wanted to show the colors, then it would show a lot of the red going toward the highlights, blue, green, and then... Uh, so red, blue, and green are the... Po anyway, don't worry about that. These are the subtractives. That's just... You don't need it. Actually, you don't even need to know about this one. Let's just go to luminosity. Because this is the one the camera is going to show you. So, uh, is there anything that you can possibly discern from this? But this, looking at this, you can't really tell if the exposure is uh, high or low or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the brightness. Watch the histogram on the left. Okay, so I'm just going to go ooh, like that. And I'm going to increase the brightness. And then that's that's the second one of what happened. And then, uh, again, nothing is in black, okay? So let's uh, cancel that, and let's, uh, adjust, let's adjust it this time, and then we'll turn it black, okay? So, or darker. So I'm just going to take the brightness and go down, and then when I let go, you'll see that we actually have some truly black, and then, um, but a lot of them are uh, kind of mid-tone and things like that. So this is the result of turning it dark. Does this mean that this photo is not good? No, actually, that's probably a really cool photo. Wh whatever you want to do is um, right. So there's, uh, in terms of the histogram, it's very, very hard to read. Um, and then here, here's another one that I like to show. This is a polar bear in the snow. Now, you'll see that there is a little hump over here for the black. That's the black eyes and the black nose. There's a lot of middle gray which would be these areas right here and maybe the little recesses of his fur. And then there's a lot of little areas that are brighter than middle gray, and that would be like the snow on his nose, for example, um, the white over here and things like that. So this is a representation of how much of the images is light, how much of it is dark, uh, dark black, and there's not a lot in the mid midtone, though there is some because there's a little three-dimensionality to the eyes. Um, but that, that, again, is uh, getting a little complicated. So the only way you're really going to be having any use of the histogram is by uh, finding the diffuse exposure uh, used through an um, opaque source. And I'll show you how that works. So this is why you want to be able to read the histogram. And this is really the only meaningful time you'd... Uh, actually want to consult it, is to do metering to find out if your exposure is correct. Now, the only way to really know if the exposure is correct is to do what I call an incident 
uh, light meter, which means that you're not reflecting off anything, you're actually taking the light that's coming in. So what I do is I take the dome of the light sphere like this, and then um, I'll just basically take my camera and put it on manual focus so that it won't you know, try to find a focus point because there won't be any when you put this on. And so uh, first shot I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on program mode, and I'm going to show you that uh, when you do that, so let's just say you know it, it wants to find out how much light is hitting my face here. When I show you the uh, histogram right here, you'll see that it is... I'm um, going to have to learn to do this backwards. and So you'll see that that shot, which is really gray, it's just uh, blown out here, but you see on the histogram, it's, um, it's smack in the middle. So if I go to manual mode, which a lot of our creative applications for photography do use manual mode, and I want to test the exposure coming into the screen, and this, again, this is also really well used for white balance, I would just simply go like this, and then put the uh, camera up to where the subject is and take a look at the histogram. And now you can see that it is dark because it's to the left. Right now it says 125 at f11, so I'm going to go down to say, you know, 160th of a second or something like that. I'm just going to take it down. Uh, okay, and then uh, we'll just go again and we'll do another shot. So right where I am. And then now that we've taken it down, let's see where are we. It's getting a little bit better. We're a little closer. And so we just keep going down until we get it smack in the middle. When it's smack in the middle, that means your incident light meter reading says that the light that's hitting your subject is perfect exposure. And using that, you'll get the perfect exposure. And then in another video, well, you'll see somewhere in my series, uh, is how to get the perfect uh, custom white balance with, uh, uh, with using the same dome. Okay, so that's how to use the histogram in short. Basically, too confusing to use out on the field, no real need to use it, but you do want to use it when you're doing metering uh, in manual and you want to get the smack on exact metering, maybe in a tricky light situation, for the light that's hitting the uh, three-dimensional face of your subject.